Good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Robinson, and my wife, Jenny, will be reading uh, the scriptures to you this morning. Hi, everyone. Jenny here. Good to see you, even if we aren't really in um, each other's presence, but just to know that um, we can still gather together. It's great. And I just am so grateful to God to know that during these times we have him um, with us. He's uh, our comfort, our wisdom, our strength, and our guidance and nothing happens without his um, permission so I trust that you're all staying safe um, and enjoying life to the best you can wherever you are and that his blessing will be upon your home uh, the reading today is from Ruth 4 and we're starting at chapter 1 at verse 1 so please read along with us so Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there when the family redeemer he had mentioned came by, Boaz called out to him, Come over here, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Then Boaz called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Naomi, who came back from Moab? She is selling the land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I felt that I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, All right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz told him, Of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can't redeem it, the family redeemer replied because this might endanger my own estate. You redeem the land, I cannot do it. In those days, it was the custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, you buy the land. Then Boaz said to the leaders and to the crowd standing around, you are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian, and Malon, and with the land I have acquired Ruth, and with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Malon, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband, and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the leaders and all the people standing there replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is now coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. May you be great to Ephrathah and famous in Bethlehem, and may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman who will be like those of our ancestor Perez, the son of Tamar and Judah, the descendants of Boaz. So Boaz married Ruth and took her home to live with him. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. And the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord who has given you a family redeemer today. May he be famous in Israel. May this child restore your youth and care for you in old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you so much and who has been better to, you, better to you than seven sons. Naomi took care of the baby and cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbour women said, Now at last Naomi has a son again. And they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is their family line, beginning with their ancestor Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Um, it's great that you could join us for church today. I'm Michaela and I'm going to be reading to you today from John 15 verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. 
remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples.